So first, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Ziggity Zoom, what, who we are. And we are basically an online and mobile content publisher of children's and family content and casual content as well. We have done five, besides having an international website for families and kids, which is, it has tons of different content. So anything from arts and craft to online games, it has food and family fun type content, and then educational content as well. We released it in 2008. That's when we started our company. And we have rolled out five uh, children's and educational games on the iOS platform. And then we have gone into then more in the casual games market. And we rolled out last November a anagram word game called Roho Word. And then we did a novelty, you know, children's game called Feed the Monster in partnership with a, Nova, a company in Nova Scotia. So that's a little bit about our background, and then we'll get, get started on the presentation. Okay, so what I'm really going to cover is why, why should you update your game app, and why should you do it maybe more often than you have been, and what are the benefits? What, what benefit can you gain from that? Okay, so I've, I've met with plenty of developers. Uh, I also do mentoring in my area for Tech Accelerator. And often what they say is, I'm having such a hard time developing it, or I've developed it, and now they wonder why they've gotten no downloads. But part of the problem is they're really not mentally or even ready as far as the development team to spend all the time they're going to have to after the app's actually available to do the updates and do the work that's needed in order to get the downloads over time. Okay, so the, the first issue is when you're creating a game, and for those of you that already have, you have to know that that's, that's really the easy part, is actually getting it published. Now it's how do we get it found and how do we continue to increase our downloads. And I, I try to tell people all the time, it's really a long-term play. So if you're not one of the top companies that's getting millions of downloads, for the rest of us, we have to struggle to get those downloads. And you know, what I say to them is, look, it's a long-term play. It might, be, it might not be even be your first game that gets you know, those types of downloads. It might be game two or three before you, kind of, you see those kind of numbers. And the next thing is you have to plan for updating your app. And by that, I mean you really have to have a schedule. So obviously, if there's bug fixes, you know, that's going to come about as it happens. But you're going to know when iOS is getting ready to update or the platform. So you're going to have to plan for making those improvements. Let's say your users keep giving you feedback. You're going to have to you know, put into a schedule when you're going to add those features in that people are asking for. Okay? So these are just some of the basics. The next thing is, how many of you are doing your development yourself versus working with a developer? Raise your hand if you, you do your own development work. OK. Well, if you ever have to bring on a, a developer, part of the issue is you might hire them in order to get the game done, but have you had a discussion about the long term? You have to find a partner, whether it's a work for hire or, or whatever the relationship. How are you going to work with them for the year after the game's been released? Because often I've found you get the game done, but then that developer, if the money's not coming in quickly, they don't want to continue working on the game. They don't want to update it. Well, that can become a huge issue, and you can really find yourself in a really bad spot. So that's the other reason we really have to consider sort of what's our plan for the next year or two years after the, the game is originally released. Okay, one of the big reasons why you need to update your app is because your users want new updates. If you don't do new updates or new levels or, or new, uh, just like Nat Geo said, new little, little, little animals, then what's going to happen is they're going to get tired of your game and they're going to move on to the next game. So you have to keep your users engaged and you have to get them excited about things. And the way we do this is we often, or we, we do updates regularly so they start anticipating the updates coming. So if they know every month or every two months you're adding a new feature or new levels or you're, maybe it's, um, even if it's a casino game, maybe you're unlocking a new uh, mini game. All of that is relevant because it brings the users back and it helps them, you know, basically spread the word about your game. So reviews and community. Another reason why we have to keep updating our game is if you don't update your game, it's no longer fresh and your reviews are going to start showing it. I mean, any game, if you go and look at it, when it first releases, the, the reviews are often very strong. Over time, the reviews become more negative, and you have to keep updating the game in order to get those reviews back up and stay positive. Okay, another thing is, if you have people giving you um, reviews, you really need to build those people into your community. And obviously, most of you are, how many of you are incorporating social into your games? Like, you know, like adding something on Facebook or updating it? 
so, so not too many. Well, as we add features like that, and obviously you don't have to launch, release your game with that, but that's something you'd want to tie in, the more you now have those people, those peop uh, the, your community liking your site or your Facebook, you're going to be able to keep um, pushing in front of them sort of your updates, okay? So that's another way. Oh, sorry, hold on. Uh, but obviously, the, n the more reviews you have, of course, the more uh, downloads you're going to get. And you have to keep those positive. And so that's one of the reasons why you've got to keep iterating. Okay, updates and social. Obviously, on our social sites, we're going to want to have content on there, not just about our brand. But the other thing we want to do is anytime we have an update or we're reviewed anywhere, we're going to put that in our social channels. So in other words, it's, it's an opportunity to have more content without having to do additional work. You mean you are, you've already done the work, which is updating or adding new features to your, to your game. Another thing is, how many of you, when your, app, your game app first came out, were you able to get as much coverage as you wanted on it? Anybody? I mean, often it takes... You'll, you'll reach out to the news media, and if you don't already have relationships with them, what happens is it'll take them four months to get back to you, if at all, and your game's been out for four months. Well, if they then contact you, they're not just looking at your game, they're looking at 100 games to decide which one's a feature. So what you have to do is you have to prove to that media person or blog or whatever it might be that you've continued to add new things to your site so they have something exciting to talk about. They do not want to talk about a game that came out four months ago, unless you all of a sudden had 100 million downloads or some huge story. So you've got to keep doing things so that people want to cover it, even if it's just putting it on an app review sites. They don't want to cover your app that came out four months ago because there's thousands coming out daily. So what you have to do is you have to recontact them as you establish a relationship with them with the new features and the updates that you have done that would be relevant to their audience. Okay, so once again, and it, you know, like I said, it, the best news is you have to start establishing relationships with these people in the industry before your app even comes out. But the nice thing is then the next time you do a game app, hopefully you're starting to build those relationships and it should be easier to get potential coverage. Okay, so how many of you, raise your hands again, how many of you have done more than one game app? Okay. Are you cross-promoting those, your games within the, your game, I mean, are you cross-promoting your games within your apps? Okay, yeah. So obviously that's really where we all have to go if we haven't gotten there yet is you've got to cross-promote within your own app. And this is an example of Toka Boca obviously doing it with several of their games. They have many more than that. And then Temple Run, as you can see, down lower is where it says more games. Okay. Okay, Apple obviously, it's not like, you're not likely going to get featured if it's your first game. Even if it's your second game, unless you have huge traction and Apple already knows you and they feel like you're really a standout. So one way to get featured is... Uh, continuing to get updates and continue to get higher numbers of downloads. It doesn't guarantee anything, of course, but what it does do is it makes it more likely that even when you roll out a new update or a huge feature, that Apple might feature you at that point. Okay? Because many of us aren't going to get featured on day one, you know, unless you're one of the big guys. So, you know, the more updates you do, and obviously then with it, you either need large increase in downloads or user base or big media coverage in order for Apple normally to pay attention. But those things are only going to help you. And, you know, once again, if you put a uh, game up and you don't do anything to it, everyone else thinks, you know what, they're not going to touch it because they didn't make money and it's just going to sit there. Well, no one wants to cover that. Nobody wants to be a part of that. So you have to show them that you're, you know, you're dedicated and you're going to put in the work. Okay, so obviously one of the things you've got to do is roll out additional games or spin off games. It doesn't really matter which. It's kind of really where, where's your best opportunity. I mean, Tokabug is obviously a great example, more in the children's area, that has done this. They've done a great job of keeping very similar to their core games, but then they roll out new versions of it. And then, obviously, Temple Run or Where's the Water. I mean, there's so many of the top 25 games or top 100 games that have had more than one um, spin-off game in that area. So that's really important to be able to, one, you get, get to your users again. If they already like a ter certain type of game, for you to do a similar game and then you know, market it to them is, is going to be much easier than doing something very different. Okay, a couple things I want to talk about. Obviously, iOS 6 was uh, you know, a year ago, but I just want to make sure that those of you that maybe have only done a game or are still considering doing games know some of this stuff, and then we'll talk about iOS 7, which is uh, supposed to hit in the fall. So the new release category was 
changed to top grossing under the general, uh, or um, sorry, under top 25. So that was one change. And then there's no comprehensive list in the App Store anymore of all apps, uh, or I'm sorry, all new apps and the updates. And there's only a partial list of newly released apps. So the bad news is when that happened, it was much harder when you did an update to even get found in the App Store. But what's coming, you know, could even be a, uh, well, hold on, we'll just go there. Um, so when iOS 7 hits, which they're expecting in October, obviously my guess is as good as yours, but they're, they're going to automatically update all the apps. I mean, when you have a new update, it'll automatically happen on the person's phone without them having to install the update. So that's a huge change. Uh, the good news is all your users will then have the update right away. The bad news is there's really no reason for it to ever be in the app store just because you did updates. And then top charts are going to go back to vertical again in the new iOS. And there's going to be a built-in wish list for paid apps. But what's interesting about that is there's so many free-to-play apps right now, and it's such a hot thing. I'm very interested to see what's going to happen with free-to-play versus paid apps. So if that wasn't on your radar yet, it's definitely something that you need to consider as we roll into iOS 7. Okay. And then trends from some of the top game apps. If you go and look at the top 25 to top 100 uh, game apps, all of them are regu or in, almost all of them are regularly updating their game. Most of them are updating it monthly, at least monthly. Some are updating their games bi-monthly. And yes, this includes bug fixes, improvements, uh, and new features. So your levels, your challenges, adding tools or social, but they are continuously updating their games. And if you're not sure how to check that data for yourself, if you, just, if you have an iPad, if you go into the app itself, there's a list of app history and it will show you the date and what the, the general idea was for each update. So you haven't looked at that, I would definitely look at your competitors or some of the top players just to, to get a better sense. And then another thing they're obviously doing is re releasing additional or related games and spin-off games. Obviously that's a huge money maker because you already have the live audience. Cross-promoting your game. I mean, it's obviously a huge opportunity for those of us that have not done that yet. I mean, that's obviously a way for us to make money. And then the majority of games, of course, are freemiums, not all of them. So free to use with in-app purchases. And in summary, all of us could do more updates more often. And then once again, I'm, I'm sure some of you have heard this talked about, you really need to just do when you, when you roll out your game, instead of trying to make it perfect, instead of trying to add every bell and whistle, just have a minimum viable game, or MVP obviously is, you know, product. Another thing to think about though, whether you're releasing your game or you're doing an update, is think about the seasonality, right? Because, for instance, if the holidays are coming up, everybody's games are rolling out right before Christmas, that's probably, it's going to be too late most likely, so you need to roll out a little sooner than that. Or uh, if it's Easter coming up and you have some little thing that will add to that, you know, we need to plan around, you know, or summer break because kids aren't doing educational stuff as much. So it's just something you need to consider as you're doing updates and what type of updates you're doing, and then also when you're rolling out your game. You can continuously tweak your title and keywords. That's another thing you can do to update your app, which only takes you a few minutes to do that, to test different keywords and titles. But when you're looking at your app from the name of it to the description, the keyword and the title of your app are the two that are most relevant in uh, the SEO for the Apple Store. So those are things that you're going to want to make sure that you are trying to alter or update if you're not where you want to be as far as downloads. And the other thing is you've got to get social, one, incorporate social aspects into your game, and then also just in social you've got to try to really um, build that community of people that are so passionate about what you're doing that they're going to be sharing it and out there on your behalf. And that's, well, that's part of building a community, excuse me. And then you've got to listen to your users, you know, from the reviews, from the reviews to, um, you know, them coming on your social sites or Twitter, wherever it is. You've got to listen to them. And when not one person, but, you know, 5, 10, 20, 30 keep telling you what sort of updates they want to hear, you really need to consider if that's something that you should incorporate and spend the time, you know, and money to make it happen. And then, obviously, re releasing additional games. And here's my info and how, uh, what questions does anyone have? She's coming. Shouldn't have worn heels. That's it. 
Uh, thanks for the presentation. It was really good. I've got two questions. The first is um, we are working on apps that definitely have kid appeal. But at the end of the day, we don't want to limit the amount of uh, potential general audience people that play our game. So on iOS 7, when they have the new kid section in the app store, you know, obviously, if you're doing stuff that's really young, like preschool targeted, like ABC, colors, shapes, etc., that makes a lot, a lot of sense. But when should when should publishers look to actually profile it as kids? Um, that's my first question. And then the second question uh, just relates to. Um, sorry, can you just go on your slides? Can you just go one slide back? Sure. This uh, one? Yeah. Okay. So when you say that you should tweak the title and keywords, is that something that Apple lets you do regularly? Because yes. I know the description you can only do on major updates. Is uh, well, certain data, and I think that or the, those are the two. I haven't tweaked ours in uh, a couple weeks, but I'm pretty sure those are the two that you can update, and it, it pretty much is, and it quickly um, posts to the App Store. Okay, sorry. Back to your first question, though. As far as kids, well, two things. One, obviously, in the past, I mean, I don't know when iOS 7 comes out, you've been able to put it under two, you know, a main category and then an additional category. So if kids is just one of your possible targets, maybe your main category would be the other um, area, whatever that might be. And then kids would be the additional category. Now, I'm assuming if kids will be a primary category, there will still be subcategories under it so that you don't have preschool mixed with a kid game for 10-year-olds. But obviously, I haven't seen the, you know, how they're going to break it down yet. I mean, someone else might know that for sure, but yeah. Does that answer your question? Okay. Um, I had a question in regards to incorporating features that are social, especially when you're developing games targeted to young kids. Um, have you seen, or just from your experience, what specific features you found to be most effective in that are parent approved? Sure. Uh, well, two things. One, obviously, I'm partly, even though we do lots of kids stuff, we also have done the word game and other things, more casual games that aren't for children. So when I speak of the more general, I meant more for that. But the ones that I've seen, both from having a company and having children that I think are parent approved, would be the things, um, think of like the talking Gina or talking Tom type of apps. So camera, where they can take pictures within the app. Uh, they can um, maybe type a message or uh, take snapshots. So in other words, it doesn't have to be where they have to, you go onto Facebook because let's hope if it's a six-year-old they're not on Facebook or Twitter or wherever. But it's going to be those other things that then they can share it with a friend. So maybe they save it to their camera roll or maybe they can text it. But that would be obviously if their parent allows them to text it to mom or dad or send it, send it that way. So a lot of them will save a WAV file or they'll save a photo that can be then shared through certain um, means. So you're right. For children, the social could be slightly different. Uh, it's not going to be you know, just sharing it online like it would be if you're in casual games not for children. But you know, like our word game is obviously not. A I mean, if children could play it. It's fine. But it's not really geared towards kids. It's geared for eight and up, but really for adults. So does that help answer your question? Within the app itself, if there are features that allow kids to simply share within the community itself or actually incorporate texting or, you know, sharing that camera um, image to the local community or the network that you're building. Right. Well, so I, it's going to depend on the type of game that you have, I think, and then, like you said, what, what age group you're trying to target. But I mean, the camera feature and some of those, it could either be just going to their in one individual person, or you're right, you could share it onto a community site where maybe the child has a profile with obviously no private information. But in that case, then they could maybe go and see their, not photo of themselves, obviously, but of the game, the drawing they made and things. So absolutely, that you could do that as well, where it could post somewhere else. I mean, you just have to make sure it, it follows the COPA guidelines in that case. Thank you very much, Chris. We're out of time, thank and thank you. you. Appreciate it.